Hello, this is Barry, Kilowatt United 3 X-Ray. I thought I'd show you a nice little portable setup that you can use either in your backyard or when you go out and set up portable somewhere. And I did it in a way that it's very compact and when the antenna cannot be erected very high in the air, I just wanted to show you that a low antenna does work. Now what I'm using with this KX3 is a 12 foot long 20 meter dipole. Now it's only tied about eight and a half feet above the ground onto the tower for right now. We go out, here's the end insulator, and then we go to the feed, here's the loading coil, I'm sorry, here's the loading coil. Remember, this is only 12 feet long for 20 meters, and here's the feed point. Now for now on this feed point, I just use a banana, a banana jack, RG174 coax, 15 feet long, and a simple ballon that you can make, that snap-on ferrite material is 43, three turns of RG174 going through there, and the rest going down to the table. And then we keep continuing on, and there's the other coil. I'm gonna explain how to make this coil and insulator. And as you can see, we go right to the lilac bush, and I just reach right up. This one here is only about five feet above the ground, so it's not very high. And the other week, I worked with this antenna, this exact setup, and the KX3 at five watts. Delta, Lima, one, Delta, Golf, Sierra at 5 watts into that antenna at that elevation. Uh, Sergi gave me a 579. I'm on CW. I explained to him exactly what I was using and how high the antenna was and he came back to me and confirmed again I was an honest 579. Now to make that antenna is very simple. First of all the center feed you can do it with the uh, banana jack. Uh, this one has you can see the one connector with the coupler or you can use the other connector that's already set up for it. And what I use is I made a, a, uh, a ballon, a one-to-one -one current ballon, and that's what I put on the center. Now that's actually what was on this dipole when I did the test, but I wanted to put a snap-on ferrite on because not everybody's going to make these. The snap-on ferrite's so easy. Now to make the antenna, the first wire that goes from here to the coil is going to be exactly four feet, two inches long and the section going from the coil to the end insulator is 28 and a half inches plus four inches of strain relief. The end insulator is a piece of fiberglass. It's 3 8 inch fiberglass. I got a tractor supply. Uh, you can get three foot for only about a dollar forty nine. Cut them down, drill holes in it. Now they are fiberglass so when you make these if you have rubber gloves, put them on. Fiberglass is itchy, and this thing is itchy, and I was itching when I made them, so the fiberglass is gonna be flying, so just be aware of that. Now to make the coil, the coil is easy. That's half inch electrical conduit. I cut it down, that's stainless, and the screw on the end where the coil attaches for, that's, that's stainless also. I use stainless, you can get it from, from uh, Lowe's, it's cheap. You, the only thing I have a hard time getting is maybe the uh, enamel wire. The enamel wire is 20 gauge enamel. Now there's 38 turns of 28 gauge wire on that coil. Uh, the inductance is 15.5 microhenry. Now remember the whole, the whole antenna system is only 12 feet long. Now I have other ones. Uh, I have, this, is, this one is 20 feet actually. What you're seeing up in the air is 12 feet. But uh, I only made one 12 foot or so. I want to show you. Uh, just what's going on. I have a 10 meter one, 40 meter one, I made a 15 meter one that's only 12 foot long and what I do is change this section, I have wing nuts on here and I change this section and the antenna becomes uh, active on 17 meters so it's kind of a manual change dual band. I needed it simple because when I go on a bike I want to be able to uh, carry as little as possible. Uh, the rope I use is nothing but nylon rope from Lowe's, you can get it. Now we get into the radio. Uh, the radio being a KX3, and with the paddles, when it's tilted up and it's on the table, these paddles are a little low to the ground. When you uh, tuck the feet in the back and lay it on a table, these paddles are a little bit too high. So what I did was, and I have it on my webpage, which is ku3x.net, November Echo Tango. Uh, I show you, the, I tell you the dimensions on. I cut a groove in here. This is three quarter inch wood and the feet on the bottom of the front of this will, will rest right in that groove and uh, the feet that tilt the radio up will rest right on here and it makes a nice elevation for CW. 
Now when you send CW, the paddles are at the proper place. Now hopefully you can see this. Let me send my call sign here. I'm going to show you the SWR of this antenna. This is without the tuner. I don't know if you can see it, it's only 1.4 to 1. It's perfect. You're not going to get it 1 to 1, so don't even think of it. Now if you're going to use sideband NCW, use the internal tuner. Turn the internal tuner on. Now it's on. Auto. Send again. Now it shows 1.4. Tell the tuner to go. Really doesn't need it. As you can see it was... Oops, sorry. That's still 1.4. You can play with it to get it down if you want. Let me ID. So there's the setup. I don't know what else to tell you. That'll be helpful. Uh, I hope you can build this stuff. The material's not hard to get. Most of it you can get at a hardware store. Uh, other stuff you have to search on the internet. Oh, I did forget one thing. These come from MPJA, Marlon P. Jones Associates. And I'm not trying to promote a business, although they're good to deal with. I have to admit to that. But this is only $2.95. This is $3.95. This is a buck. So either way, you're going to spend $3.99. But I notice in searching on the internet, these things, the guys want $5 to $10 a piece for them. Well, I'm trying to save you money too, so maybe that'll help you save a little bit of money. Hope to hear you on the air. 73, good DX. Did it, 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 from KU3X.